Welcome to episode 6 of Love Ultras. I'm John Kiniston. For this episode, I wanted to talk about kit. I think uh, when, when you first start running, you think, oh, it's a dead uh, cheap sport, all you need is a pair of running shoes and you're away, which is true in some ways. But in the ultra world, then you do end up with a lot more gear than that and have to for these races that go on for a long time. Now, I recognize that uh, kit is very, very personal. What works for one person doesn't necessarily work for, for others. So this is just my personal choices at the moment of what I, I run in <coughs> for an ultra race, whether it's a, a 40 mile, 50 mile race, 100 mile race. Might carry more or less of it, but basically this is the kit that I wear and carry in races. I thought I'd start from the bottom up and then add on the extra bits as well that I, I carry. So to start from the, the, the feet, I run in sketches at the moment. Uh, when I first started Ultras, I tried one or two shoes and then I settled into Innovates and I ran there. I used those for the first couple of years. Um, but then I was just starting to struggle a little bit with um, the fact that there wasn't a great deal of cushioning in them and there's quite a few of the Ultras were on roads. And then um, when I went through a tough patch in 2011 and 2012, I decided to switch the Hokers. I'd seen people use them and they looked uh, interesting. So I tried them for the Lakeland 100 and they were absolutely brilliant. And I used them for the next two or three years. But then sadly for me, Hoka changed the fitting. So instead of having a nice wide fitting that suited me, cause I've got a bit of a nasty bunion on my right foot and um, I need a wide shoe box. And so I couldn't fit in them. So I tried one or two other things. And then my friend Dave Troman recommended sketches, which are not quite as cushioned as Hoka's, but I've got more cushioning than Innovates and other shoes. And I found the, um, the, the Go Run Ultra 2 to be the, my favorites. They brought out a third and even a fourth, I think, but I've not tried those yet. I've stocked up with two or three pairs of the Sketches Go uh, Ultra 2, because they're the ones I seem to prefer. For socks, I wear Drymax socks. When I first started, I just uh, used any old socks really. And then I had some really bad runs where my feet got quite wet and never dried. And, and then I started using Sudocreme and a thin pair of cotton socks and then a thicker pair, uh, which was fine if they didn't get too wet. Um, but if they got wet like they did on my first uh, Lakeland 100, my feet were just in absolute bits. So I needed, I realized I needed something else. And I got someone recommended Drymax socks and I've been using them for the last three, four years very successfully. They're quite nice because they have like two layers. So the inner layer expels the water and the outer layer uh, absorbs it. So they work pretty well. And I find that I can be running and I get my feet get wet and then I carry on and they're soon pretty dry. So they're my choice of socks. Next up, I wear uh, skins. And I wear just the ones that come just below your knee. <clears throat> when I first did ultras the first year, I had a few problems with my groin that was a bit sore. And also my quads just couldn't cope with the, the bashing. And um, someone recommended skins, so I started wearing them. And it seems to absolve those two problems. I've never had real problems with my groin again. No chaffing because they're nice and tight and comfortable. And I don't know whether it helped with the quads or whether it was just the training I did or just getting used to it but certainly I've not had the same problems with my quads. So I just routinely wear skins now for anything over two hours. I wear thinner inner, short, inner uh, ones for anything shorter than that, but I find those comfortable. For shorts, uh, I like a longish pair of shorts. And my favorites at the moment are these Reebok ones. And uh, they've got two nice deep pockets. So it means that I can carry one or two bits in the pockets if I want to. Um, but I quite like having the slightly longer shorts. And they've got a drawstring as well, so I can tighten or loosen those depending on uh, how full my stomach is, I suppose. Um, but that seems to work really well. Uh, next layer up is my tops. Uh, if it's cold, I'll wear a base layer. I quite like this Halley Hansen one. I've got one or two other merino wool ones as well. Um, but I'll, if it's cold in the winter, <coughs> I'll wear an, uh, the, uh, the base layer. And then on top, I tend to like a long sleeve top. Uh, my favorite by far is this green one. And uh, I quite like it because it, uh, if you're not that many people wear green. And so if someone's taking photos, you tend to be able to find yourself. That's purely a vanity thing for me. I quite like to see photos of the, myself in races from my blog and stuff. So, but that green, this green top is really comfortable. 
Uh, I like it because the sleeves are elasticated a bit so you don't flap around. Uh, I like having a zip and a collar because the rucksack I wear, if I have a round neck, it rubs my neck, whereas a collar, I can put the, the straps inside and it works really well. And it's got a zip at the front, which means I can, if it's hot, I can um, get a bit of air coming in. <clears throat> and then if it gets warm, I can just pull the sleeves up and use it as a, a sleeve, as a short sleeve top. If it is going to be really warm, um, then I will run with a, a short sleeve top. But again, I like to have a zip and a collar so that it doesn't rub with my rucksack. For my head and um, buff, the buffs are by far my favourite and I've got a whole variety of buffs. I don't know how many I've got now because all the West Highland Way races give you a buff and so do lots of other races like the, the Hardmoors and the Lakeland 100 and uh, Devils and all, all these races. So I tend to have a nice collection of, uh, of buffs. I like them because you, if it's cold, I don't like getting my ears cold. So I tend to be able to uh, put it as a headband and keep my ears nice and warm. Uh, but if it's really hot, then they're brilliant for soaking in streams and pouring on yourself. So they're pretty versatile in, lot, in, uh, in lots of ways. If it's colder than a buff, then I've got a couple of hats that I turn to. Uh, nice beanie hats. I've uh, got the West Highland Way one and just a mountain gear one. And again, they're quite good if it's, uh, if it's really cold. But I must admit, I don't tend to like running in a hat because I find out I get hot and uh, I much prefer to have a, a buff, which means that my head's uh, at least letting some of the, the heat out if I'm, if I'm running hard. And if it's really hot, I would tend to wear a visor. I've got a pair of sunglasses, but to be honest, they often get um, steamed up when I'm running. And also when you take them off, what, what you do with them, the bit of a pain to put away and they're uh, scared about dropping them or losing them. So I prefer a buff, which I mean, a, a, a visor, <clears throat> and that helps because it keeps the sun out your eyes and also it keeps my head clear so I can uh, keep keep cooler. So there's my basic kit that I, that I run in. Uh, <clears throat> if it's uh, wet, then obviously I need uh, waterproofs. I do have a, a very uh, simple uh, uh, windproof top, this Brooks one, and I quite like that. I don't wear it too often, to be honest. But if it's really windy and a bit cold there and I don't want to get out a jacket, then it's, it folds up in just to the pocket, so it's a tiny size. Um, but that's great because it just keeps the wind out. But as I say, it's not something I wear too often. My favourite top is my OMM uh, jacket. And I like the smock style, so you can just put it over your head and it's got quite a long zip down to the uh, chest bone or whatever. So that's quite a good one. And it's a, it's a great jacket. Keeps the basic rain out. Obviously, if it's really, really heavy rain, then I'd need a heavier jacket. Uh, and I do have one, but I never actually run with that. So I'm always hoping that even if it is wet, I'm going to be able to, to keep moving and not get too cold. I think if I did a race that was in, it was going to be a long time in the rain and in the winter, then I'd have to rethink what jacket I wore. But um, basically, for the my the ultras I tend to do are from sort of uh, March through to October, and this jacket's fine, so I'm really happy with this one. A lot of races insist you have waterproof trousers with se uh, tape seams, so I just got a cheapish pair and uh, very 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 rarely wear them because um, I don't like having things on my legs and even if it's cold I'll run in shorts because I just feel more comfortable with with that. Okay other bits of gear that I, I take with me and um, I like to have a camera I like to take some photos and video clips of my make some little diaries and my favorite the one I'm using at the moment is just a little Kodak camera and uh, it's quite uh, it's quite uh, water, waterproof, uh, water resistant or waterproof and quite light and it takes a, a decent uh, little video clip. The photo is not brilliant, uh, the quality camera, but the videos are okay. And sometimes I'll just carry my iPhone and that's got a great camera and, uh, and video on it as well. And then um, I also take a little uh, phone and I just have a dead cheap Nokia one that I just use for my run-ins, dead light, battery lasts forever. Um, and so that's excellent just for have to carry for um, for a, a race situation. Uh, if I'm going to run in the dark, then obviously I need a head torch. And I've got three different sizes here, all Petzl ones. I've got the little blue one, which is basically just a quite light, but it's not brilliant light, but gives you enough. I've got the uh, um, Expo, is it? I think it's called. 
and then um, that one's fine again you didn't you can put batteries in it so you can replace the batteries and then last year i bought the nano when i was going to do the hard mode 160 and i was going to be a lot longer in the dark and that's a rechargeable one uh, which is a brilliant light but the battery life is not as good <coughs> so if you're going to go through eight nine hours of dark um, I, I don't think it really uh, can really cover that so you end up having to replace it anyway either get another battery pack i suppose or to swap it around and then get your support crew to recharge it but that would be my uh, go-to for uh, the head torches um, also a water bottle um, I really like having one with a straw so you can just flip it open and you can just suck it up rather than to pick up the bottle that might seem a, a little thing but when you've been running for a long time I find it's great I really enjoy just being able to do that rather than having to lift it up I know a lot of people into soft flasks these days but I don't like to have things on my chest I'd rather have the uh, the water bottle in my pack at the side and I like to be able to see what's in there. It's dead easy to fill up in a stream or in a checkpoint. Whereas I think some of the soft flasks, soft flasks are quite narrow, so hard to get your tailwind in or whatever you want to put in there as well. So I must admit, even though it's a little bit heavier, I quite I really use the bottle and quite like to uh, to, to have that. Also uh, for rucksack, I've um, I got this um, North Face Enduro a few years ago, and I just really like it. I know there's lots of better vests out there, probably lighter, um, but I just like this one. <laughs> and I find I'm the sort of person once I've found something, then I just stick with it, and I'm more than happy with um, uh, with with that. Um, and um, yeah, so that's my. Um, that's the rucksack. I've also got a little bum bag. So for the West Highland Way race this year, for the first few checkpoints, I might just run with this bum bag, which can get water in and get my camera and my phone and my blankets, mostly blankets. And uh, on the other side, I can just carry little bits of food that I need as well. So I think that would be quite a good choice for the first couple of legs and or even up to Salak Salaki. And then for the lock side, uh, when I don't see my support crew, I'll probably sw switch over to the en Enduro pack. And gloves, got three different types of gloves which I tend to wear. I've got the uh, just quite thin ones, which are, if it's just a little bit cold, then they're quite good. Uh, if it's a bit colder, I wear these yellow ones. Um, I think the cycling ones actually, but they're quite nice because they fit on quite comfortably and they're a bit of, quite waterproof. So if it's pouring with rain, I can get them on and off quite easy. And then if it's really bad, I've got a pair of seal skin ones, but I can't remember actually running with those because I don't think it's ever been that cold that I've uh, had to wear the seal skin ones, but I've got them there um, if I need to. So trying to think if I covered everything. Uh, emergency blankets, yeah, some races ask for an actual bag or some just for the, th the foil blanket. So depending on what's needed, I'll, I'll take those. Also take a, a basic first aid kit as well if that's, uh, if that's asked for. Um, so that's my kit. And uh, I say over the years I've, uh, found out uh, what works for me all this is tried and tested and I know it's comfortable and they're uh, more than happy with uh, all my choices there still on, still on the lookout for different things if I see something else that I, I, I'd like to try but um, I must admit this close to the race it's now uh, the West Highland Way race is five weeks on Saturday so all this gear is being tested and retested and tried and I know it's comfortable and I can run with it without much issues so I'm going to stick with what works for me. So this is uh, where I'm up to with my kit.